Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with a fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, there's a banner coming up, and I feel, well, it's a banner coming up, but more like it's the next part of the banner, so I'm going to talk about the units that are located inside there. Uh, it's This is the current one currently going on, which is a part of the pre-release campaign, as we wait for them to confirm whether or not the Learning with Manga co uh, collab actually happens <laughs> right after Water, uh... What do they call it in English? Water Monster Crisis instead of Sea Monster Crisis. Whether or not it happens right after the end of Water Monster Crisis, we'll find out pretty soon, but at least we got this campaign that's still going on. They did say mid-April, and 19th is pretty close to mid-April. I guess mid-April would actually technically be today, because April goes to the 30th. I've talked for too long. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a Stolfo Saber and a Stolfo Four Star. So there we go. Very easy... Very, for most people, <laughs> you don't summon on this. <laughs> but if you're curious about Astolfo, sure, I'll talk about Astolfo. So let's go right into it. Four star of Astolfo to start with. Uh, Rider. Uh, Knight of Evaporated Sanity is it also, aka, I, even though I don't really hear him called. Rider of Black, I heard. Sailor Paladin, I've also not really heard Astolfo called by that. Anyway, Astolfo is a Rider. Three quick, one arts one buster two hits on the quick two hits on the arts one hit on the uh buster and four hits on the extra the active skills are monstrous monstrous strength to c minus increases own attack for one turn 28 percent attack that's right a whole 28 percent attack cooldown of five second skill trap of argalia down with the t down with a touch d chance to stun one enemy for one turn 90 percent on a cooldown of eight you better watch the fuck out for this, man. Uh, and this is actually one good skill. <laughs> the Evaporation of Sanity D+. Grant self crit star regeneration with an 80, 80, 65% chance to work for 5 turns. Grant self critical star regeneration or a rate up for a 65% chance to work for 5 turns. Grant self critical damage up with a 65% chance to work for 5 turns. And the most important part about this, charges on NP gauge... Uh, the star regen is 10, the star rate is 50%, the crit damage is 40%, and the NP up is 50% on a cooldown of 8. The bomber here is, of course, the 8, and I think they have a note here to say the probability of a crit star generation up and a critical damage up are recalculated for each attack. Yeah, it's a, it's a real random skill, <laughs> but the important thing is that it has a 50% MP charger. Magic Resistance A, Writing A+, Independent Action B are the three passive skills that Astolfo has. Third skill is the Anti-Saber Attack Damage Aptitude, because trust no one, not even yourself. And the Noble Phantasm is Rank B++, the Hippogriff, Otherworldly Phantom Horse, uh, like I said, Rank B++, Anti-Army, Hits One Time, Quick, Deals Damage that Ignores Defensive Buff for All Enemies, and then Grand Self Evasion for Three Attacks. Uh, the MP damage at level 1 is 800%, and if you get it all the way to MP5, it's 1,200. Uh, the overcharge effect is gain some crit stars. At uh, charge level 1, it's 10. and the final charge level, it is 30, and that is a Stelfo. Stelfo also comes with some costume dresses, only one. They don't want to release the other ones that they've put a Stelfo in, I assume because they are meant to be fetish wear. <laughs> Which is the schoolgirl outfit that uh, Stolfo also has, but that was a part of Agartha, so that was a whole thing. Anyway, that's not available, but you do have this uh, costume, which is really nice. So that's Astolfo. How good is Astolfo Actuality, the four-star writer version? Um, I don't think he's any... It's funny because I think he is solid. He is good. Um... An MP up by 50% is kind of crazy on a on a skill that does this much stuff. Um, the problem is is that the other two skills... I mean, the stun is actually... I, I was making fun of it because it was 90%, but honestly, a stun skill is very good. The cooldown of 8, this is also... You can tell that it's weighted to the way Fago used to be. I think in modern days, this would be a stun chance. I think there's literally units that stun 100% of the time, and their cooldown is not this restrictive. <laughs> There's some who do it on their Noble Phantasm, and they can spam it the next turn. It's kind of crazy to give it this much restriction on a 4-star. But, you know, again, when he was originally designed, that was the de design space. So, therefore, you have to wait for this to get buffed at some point. Not to say that the, it's necessarily a bad skill. 
it's one that uh, you have to use with the understanding that it has a 10% chance of failure, which means that 10% of the time you'll go, God damn it, why did they make it 90 <laughs> instead of 100? Uh, and the monster C is, I think, actually a legitimate a kind of a bad skill that they need to buff at some point. 28% attack for a single turn is just bad. But this ability here, funny enough, makes it so that uh, combined with this skill here makes it so that you could potentially do some pretty funny stuff with a Stolfo. Because granting yourself evasion for three attacks, and it doesn't sound like there's any like cooldown for it, it means that you are just uh, you have an evasion for three attacks, as far as I'm aware of. I actually don't know if you just spam this again. Would you do it again? I would need to know, because unfortunately I do not use a Stolfo for much of anything. But I think you could use them in a kind of challenging kind of quest scenario. In terms of farming, I think you could probably get it done with... Yeah, a Stolfo, Kaleidoscope, hit him up. The problem is is that he only has a single hit, but that's okay because when you have a 50% MP uh, charger, at least you can get to the 50% and then Scotty can go in and then you would swap in with, with either Oberon or Waver to get the last 50% of some kind. So it's possible. It's totally possible. And you can probably do enough damage that it would uh, work out and then you also ignore any defensive buffs that they might have. So that's a Stolfo, not probably the most, probably not the most robust four-star writer. There's definitely better four-star writers out there. Um, Habitrot being a pretty good example of being a free-to-play one, but also designed modernly. Uh, but also, that's arts focus. This one's quick focus. In terms of quick uh, writers, I mean, there's obviously, um, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting, the Carrot Man. Why am I forgetting Carrot Man's name? He's also in Apocrypha, and I also really like him. And he was at the Battle of Troy. Achilles, there we go. <laughs> Eventually, I, I varied it out. Achilles is also a quick writer, and I feel like is probably a little bit better suited for all the things that I mentioned for Astolfo doing. But then it's also not Astolfo. Astolfo is literally a fan favorite for many people. And as long all they care about is, can I use a Stolfo and stuff? And I feel like you can figure out a way to use a Stolfo and stuff. And that works out. Perfect. Though, really, they should probably buff this first skill to maybe be three turns, and this skill to at least give it a 100% chance, <laughs> if anything else, and maybe add a little bit more. Maybe add some damage up, because it doesn't look like he has any innate damage to himself outside of his just skills, which is writing A+, plus for the 11%. Uh, boost a quick, but you know, if you have a better idea of how to improve four star Ostelfo, feel free to tell me. But I'm pretty sure just l with the stuff I mentioned, that would work out. Next, the other Ostelfo, five star Ostelfo, Saber Ostelfo. This one is actually limited. The other Ostelfo you can always randomly get in any banner, which is how I've always got an Ostelfo writer. Um, Ostelfo Saber, uh, everyone's favorite Santa five star. That's probably not true. No, it has to be someone's favorite, though. Mm. Who's actually the best five-star? Never mind. It's a conversation for a later time. Someone has to out there really like five-star stuff for Christmas. Is that a Chicago? It would be a Ever Chicago would probably be the best in terms of pure popularity, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that always, failing to get her almost made me quit the game. So... Yeah. So I'll say it is Air Chicago before. People who fail to get a Stoffel Saber will say, oh, at least I have a Stoffel Rider. There's no another, like, a Resh to Arish. go to yet. Yeah, there still isn't. <laughs> this many years later, there is still another another Arish Goggle. You're correct. All right. We've solved that. Uh, he is too quick, two arts, one buster. His aptic skills are Kasur de Legistil, strong, B+, which is an eventual interlude buff, which I don't know if we have the interlude at the moment. This was introduced in interlude campaign 16, which was in 2021, so that would mean add two gears, it's already in the game. Uh, charges on MP gauge, charges on MP gauge every turn for three turns, removes on debuffs, and then gains crit stars. 20% NP, 20% MP regen, and stars are 20 on a cooldown of 5. Second skill, La Black Luna, magic flute that calls panic C, inflicts terror for one time, three turns to all enemies. Chance to activate the debuff below every turn. When activated, 500% chance to stun for them for a single turn. Grant self evasion for three attacks, three turns. Attack, uh, the activation chance is 40% at level 10, and the cooldown is 6. 
And the third skill is the Majestic Triumph Triumphal Return EX. Increases on attack for three turns. Increases on crit damage for three turns. Increases on crit star absorption of buster cards for three turns. Attack up is 20%. The crit damage is 30%. And the buster absorption is 500% on a cooldown of five. Magic Resistance A and Writing A are the two passive skills that Astolfo has. The third skill is the anti rider Attack Damage Aptitude because apparently both the Astolfos do not stand each other at all. It's instant beef on site. Uh, Noble Phantasm is the Rank B Volcano Calgorante, the Fortuitous Abduction Net, Rank B, Anti-Unit, hits 9 times, deals damage to 1 enemy, seals their NP for 1 turn, the damage is 1,200 NP level 1, and if you get it all the way to level 5, that is 2,000 damage you're doing, and then you increase the own quick performance for 3 turns. This activates first charge at uh, charge level 1, it's 20% quick up, and if you get it all the way to the final charge level, that's a cool 40. And that is a Stelfo Saber. Um, first, some things that are nice. The number of hits on this is very nice. I think I forgot to mention it with Stelfo, but basically, I mean, I, I talked about it a little bit. But when it comes to quick, the more hits, the better, because that's how they kind of get their they get their regen from their they get they're able to regen their NP better. The more hits you do after you do over damage. So the more hits on an MP, the better. That's why if you only hit once, and this is true for Arts as well, but Arts has a little bit is a little bit better at doing it because Quick is more focused on crit stars as opposed to Arts, which is a little bit more focused on uh, gaining NP. So the more hits on a Quick card, the better. Um, I also forgot to mention the number of hits. There's three hits on his Quick uh, Quick cards, three hits on his Arts, four hits on his Buster, and seven on the extra. So the number of hits increase is always good. Um, Astolfo is a single target servant, so therefore he has to he have to kind of put into your mind how badly do you want to kind of fight in a single target environment. And I'll say that he seems pretty well suited. The final effect of increasing on crit star absorption of buster cards for three turns, I think is actively a waste. He has a 500% chance to get a buster absorption to a single buster card. <laughs> Which is not very good. <laughs> I fe it feels almost like why did you design it this way for the single buster card? But yeah, I guess in theory that was going to do the most damage. But if you're doing a double Scotty setup or triple Scotty setup that we're soon going to have due to summer, um, I assume that you would want to want it to always go to the quick cards because that's going to be where 150 percent extra damage is coming from. But you know, what do I know? The crit damage is nice at 30%. The attack up at 20% is solid, and it's over three turns. This ability, funny enough, Terror, I always, like, I never know the best way of gauging Terror, but I will say that in my specific use case of using Terror, uh, which has been in the challenge quest where we've used um, Gilles the Reyes, <laughs> Terror has actually come in pretty clutch at some random times. <laughs> so even though I my gut feeling is always to be like, ah, Terror kind of sucks. He, does he have a stun? Abigail or has a terror. Which one has the terror? Abigail. Abigail has a terror. That's come into play before. Yeah. That's helped us out. Okay, my bad. Uh, he has a straight up stun. But the point is, terror has actually helped us out in the past. And even if this does fail, the grant self evasion for three attacks, three turns is pretty damn solid. And this is on a cooldown of six. That's also pretty nice. Gives him some nice survivability. Um, even if the three attacks, three, if this was, if you just remove the three turns or something, it just was three attacks, this would be an amazing skill, but that's still pretty solid in my eyes. And this one was eventually buffed to be much better than it was, because on debut, it was a single charge on MP gauge every turn for three turns, and then remove on debuffs, which was not enough. Now, it's much better, <clears throat> because like I usually, like I've said before, when talking about quick units, sometimes it can be a little bit tough when it comes to NP regen on some of them, because some of them just do not have either the enough attacks to go after, or they're just missing something to kind of go over the edge to actually allow them to get enough NP so that you can comfortably use Scotty to give them the 50% and then just straight up attack and go that way. Um, this will help them out. This will also help them out in the beginning setup. Like I said, this way you don't need the max limit um, kaleidoscope or to use the second skill which is mana loading this way if you can just have a regular kaleidoscope this will go take the 20 percent but even then if you don't go with a kaleidoscope build it just helps much better for a lot of things so i think either way it's a pretty solid kind of buff the 20 percent uh the only bummer about it i can think there's obviously a bunch of different ways where the 20 percent will not come into play obviously 30 percent usually 
I think I actually prefer 30%. But either way, 20% should work out perfectly fine. With most CEs and most setups, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Um, and the ability to remove your own debuffs is nice, even though chances are when you use this, it's almost never going to actually go off because this is something you want to use kind of from the start to do a lot of stuff. Or you want to save it for when you're about to go popping off because you will get the 20 crit stars and then you can kind of go in into one with Astolfo. So, yeah, similar to the other Astolfo, I think he ends up being a, sa a Saber unit who is pretty solid. Not probably the best of the best, but one that you can definitely use and figure out teams around, I'd say. There's nothing, like, inherently bad that I can see that you couldn't just say, like, well, obviously it's just because it's he's old. It's, like, one of those things where it's, like, well, obviously just another unit does it better. And it's, like, yeah. <laughs> obviously they do. Um... And in terms of single target saber quicks, I think it's like C. I I remember because this always comes up every single time that I talk about this. I know it's Caesar, and there's another one. It's Okita as the other big one. Um, but typically there isn't a lot of, not a lot actually. I think Okita Summer might be. Okita Summer's an assassin. Okita Summer is an assassin. Ka Karna Santa is the one. He's a single target quick that is also very good and a little bit better free to play friendly. So there are other options if you're someone who's just like looking for a single target quick saber for whatever reason. I would say Karna is usually the one you want to go with because he's the easiest to get to MP level 5 and he's also just solid across the board. And is the investment on the 4 star is never as heavy as the investment on the 5 star is. And also, he, it's easier to get the medals for Karna. I just had him laying around, so I was able to unlock a lot of his stuff. So it's not that hard compared to a lot of other next stuff. Next one would be free with Santana. Next one would be free with Santana? Yeah. Hmm. It ends up being a weirdly contentious spot, then, for single target Saber Quicks. But yeah, that's Astolfo. That I think if you're... Course. Considering the audience for summoning for Astolfo are people who love Astolfo, can you use Astolfo in fights? The answer is yes. Which is the main thing that you care about for this in this kind of instance. Is Astolfo a meta-breaking threat? No, not really. Should you be summoning for Astolfo if you do not care about Astolfo? The answer is also no, because the upcoming year is looking... Pretty rough as everyone prepares for anniversary to get rid of the three five-star units that are going to be with Summer and then, of course, Archetype Birth that appears for anniversary. And we are actually steadily climbing very close to anniversary time. And even if you discount all of that, Castoria is coming at the end of the month. <laughs> That's another thing to kind of keep in fact, uh, keep in mind if you are someone who is brand new to the game and you're wondering, like, damn... I love Astolfo, but is there anything big meta gaming changing that is potentially coming over the horizon that I need to watch out for? And the answer is yes. Castoria is coming. And if we follow the way I think South Korea did it, it seems like for Trom they re-released Vich. I'm not saying that that's going to happen for us. I actually would be very surprised if that happened for us. But, because you can see here the main interlude, Tunguska situ Sanctuary, I believe this is where she was related and released for. Um, I'd be kind of surprised if we did that for NA, but you know what? It could happen. Something to keep in mind at the very least. So there you go. That's this banner. I wish you the best of luck if you do end up summoning. It should be up uh, literally by day roll from when this video releases. Because this is the last day for Tomomo and uh, Summer Helena. And then it's a Astolfo and a Astolfo. And then it's uh, on the 21st. It is... Da Vinci and the Pirates, and then it ends with another Da Vinci and Marie. So, best of luck to you. I'll hopefully be doing... I'm going to wait another single day to see if they some kind of confirmation comes up that tells me that um, the Bunyan event is actually going to happen <laughs> at the end of the water crisis. Uh, water monster crisis. We'll see. Um... I'm going to give it just a single more day, and if it doesn't happen, then it should video talking about that should be up on Wednesday. And I have some other stuff planning up, too, um, that I'm working on the logistics for, so please stand by. But for now, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Best of luck to you, and until next time, goodbye. Peace out.